In the winter of 2005, scientists made a frightening discovery. Increasing global temperatures were causing the Greenland ice sheet to melt at an alarming rate. With the help of satellite sensors, scientists saw that the glaciers had softened to the point that they risked a sudden collapse. If that happens, it would cause a catastrophic rise in sea level. If we continue on business as usual, it will be this century, and very possibly before the middle of the century. You mentioned the sea level would rise 20 feet alone if Greenland melted. How does that affect the world? Well, th that kind of an increase would inundate uh, most of South Florida, most of South Louisiana, parts of Manhattan. In the low countries of Europe, like uh, the Netherlands and Belgium, uh, they would be almost completely covered. In China, 250 million people would be underwater. Almost the entire nation of Bangladesh. It's even been speculated that if the sea level rise occurred fast enough, some major cities might have to be abandoned. Like, for instance, London, because it's too complex and too expensive to build the sea walls as high as are necessary. Are you going to build a wall 25 meters high around Florida? I don't think so. You're talking about hundreds of millions of refugees. I mean, this is, that's huge. I mean, I, I think it's impossible to imagine a strain it is. on the system quite that big. It really is. We have, we have seen what happened when 100,000 people were displaced from New Orleans and the Gulf Coast uh, communities. And it's difficult to imagine a couple of hundred million you're going to see mass migrations on a biblical scale. Obviously, the, the movement of people into new areas and the, uh, the, the social ramifications of that are going to cause real problems. As an estimated one billion people worldwide are forced inland by rising waters, the remaining habitable land will ironically be gripped by a different kind of water crisis. In the West, 75% of the water comes from snowpack. We're going to lose that snowpack. We've built up cities, huge cities, that depend totally on that water. With the planet's fresh water in short supply, it would become increasingly difficult to grow crops, setting off a worldwide food shortage, igniting a new set of crises. The United Nations identifies something like 150 flashpoints where wars may be fought over water. War, famine and drought, coupled with an unstable climate system, could push the death toll into the billions. This is a level of uh, disaster that the world has never seen. Reducing carbon dioxide output is not rocket science. The technology needed for cleaner engines, efficient power, and sustainable development exists on the shelf today. We're driving cars that get 20 miles to the gallon. They could be getting 80. That could save three quarters of the oil we use in our cars. So there's so much that we can do. That's really simple. In order to get the Earth's climate back on track, each of us individually and as a nation will need to learn how to meet our food, transportation, and electricity needs without filling the air with CO2. The problem has yet to be addressed on a national scale. But even if we find the political will to make the necessary changes in the United States, I mean, what about China and India? China's putting a new coal plant online every single week. So even if we change, if the rest of the world isn't doing it, what good is it going to do? In order to convince China and India to help solve this problem, we have to provide leadership, moving first and gaining moral authority to require the others to join.